In this video, I will explain the meaning of the mathematical quantifiers, which are these two symbols. The first one, uh, that looks like an upside down A, means for all or for every. And the second one, that looks like a backwards E, means there exist or there is. An important note is that whenever in mathematics we say there is or there exists, we always mean, unless we say otherwise, at least one. For example, if I say there is a solution to this equation, I mean there is at least one solution. There could be more than one. Let's see some examples of these symbols in use. I'll start with for all. Let's see, this reads, this reads, for every real number x, x squared is greater or equal than zero. For every real number x, x squared is greater or equal than zero. That's certainly true. Okay. Uh, by contrast, let's do a statement with their exist. This reads, there exists a real number x, x squared equals 2. And from the beginning, this already reads a little bit weird. This is not the way we would speak in English. We would put a connector in between those two things. It is much easier to read this if I include here in the middle the word such that, which I'm going to abbreviate as st. And whenever we have this, this means such that. ST. So there exists a real number x such that x squared is equal to 2. Um, whenever you see an existential quantifier, you should pretend there is a such that after that, even if it's not there implicit, explicitly. So I always pretend such that follows there exist. So there exists a real number x such that x squared equals 2, and this is true. Uh, for example, we could take uh, x equals root 2. Now, there is more than one number. We could also take x equals negative root 2, and that would also be true. But as I said above, there exists means there exists at least one. So one is enough. By contrast, if I write the following statement, there exists a real number x such that x squared is minus 1, and this is false. Uh, the square of a real number is never negative, so that one is false. So these are examples of statements with for all and with their exist. But I want to contrast both of them with the following. If I look at this statement, just by itself, x squared less than 5, without saying anything else, this is neither true nor false. This is actually meaningless. This doesn't mean anything. It's neither true nor false. Um, unless we have already, prior to writing this, agreed on what x is, unless we have already introduced the variable x and given it a meaning, this by itself means nothing. Am I saying this inequality is true for one value of x, for many value of x, for all the values of x in a certain set? This could mean many different things. And if we don't specify, mathematically, this is not a valid way to make a statement. And that's the reason why we like for all and we like there exist because they allow us to make precise statements. They're not the only ways, but they're the most common ones. So if you ever attempted to start a theorem or a proof or a definition by writing something like this without saying precisely what you mean about x, then chances are it doesn't make any sense. 